Okay, boys. What am I doing in this video? I'm going to explain um, what linear regression is or like how it works. And um, I'm a bit sick at the moment. So, um, yeah, I sound pretty gay. But um, I'm going to explain like the maths behind linear regression and um, how the algorithm works and what the computer actually does. So basically, this is our data, right? Let's say it's two dimensional. So you got your X and your Y. And we put it on a scatter plot. And you can see that the data follows kind of like a trend, right? As X is increasing, the Y increases as well, right? It's going upwards in this um, direction. It's like a positive linear association. So what our linear regression algorithm does is it tries to make a line of best fit to um, best show the trend um, in, in a line, right? So for something like this, it would probably do a line like that, right? It's positive and it's kind of in the middle of the data and it's showing the trend that it's positive, right? So that's what our algorithm does. Now, the way it does this is it uses an uh, equation called uh, y equals mx plus c, or um, you would have learned this in high school math. It's a lot of variations. There's also ax plus b or mx plus b or whatever. It's all the same shit. So y is the predicted y value from the line, um, which is the result of this equation. M is the slope or the gradient of the line. X is the x value that you want to get for the y value that corresponds to it. And then it's plus c, and c is um, the y-intercept of the line. So the y-intercept is here where it, the line intercepts the y-axis. M is the gradient or the slope of the line. And the way you find that is just by taking two points on the line. And then you wanna do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That looks awful because I'm doing it on my mouse, but whatever. But yeah, so that's how you find the slope and then y-intercept is that. So that's the equation, and that's what the algorithm is doing when you're running it on some data, okay? So what can I do with this line? Well, by following this line, you can give it an x value in the future, or that's, um, you can extrapolate the data, right? Um, by using a given x value to predict a y value, right? So let's say this is like, the x value is the year, and the y value is like a house price, right? And you wanna see, well, the house in, I don't know, 2012 was this much. I wanna know how much it's gonna be worth in five years, right? So let's say you give it um, in five years time, which is gonna be whatever the x value is, and then you can predict how much the house is gonna cost, right? So that's what this um, algorithm is for. And this is just in two dimensions with um, x and y. So in like, machine learning you can have multiple dimensions and that depends on how many attributes you have or how many features you have and the more features you have um can definitely improve the accuracy of um linear regression and the only time you you want to use linear regression is when there's a linear association in your data so let's say I'll give you an example of when you wouldn't want to use this is let's say you plot the data and the data looks something like this like like this like it's there's no correlation between x and y this means that it's going to be a lot harder to find um, an accurate prediction based on a linear um, regression or line of best fit so for something like this, you might want to use a different algorithm um, or add more features or less features to um, try and get a linear correlation. And this line can also be negative as well. So let's say these dots were going downwards. You can also have a negative line of best fit. So that's how this um, equation works and how the computer pretty much runs this algorithm and what's going on behind the scenes. And so let's start coding it. What the frickin' heck is going 
on boys if you're new here please subscribe um when you subscribe you join the boys uh just the group we are we're a bit of a family you know just the boys um if you enjoy this video if it helps you out click the like button it's the only thing that makes me feel better about myself um so with that being said sit back relax crack a cold one with the boys and let's get into it the data we're using is this bike sharing data i don't know it's fucking boring but it's about a bike share system don't worry about it um basically all it is is like the number of it's like i don't know it, we have it in my city but um like public bikes in the city or whatever so you like go up and you just rent it for like the day or whatever anyway it's meant to like help pollution because like people won't use cars then but it's like fuck off so what this data shows is a linear correlation between a uh, temperature average temperature wind speed uh season shit like that and they correlate it with the amount of people who borrow a bike that day so it makes sense you know if it's like a sunny day or whatever it's not much wind probably going to be more people getting bikes so it's understandable but we'll have a look at the data once we get it uh this link's going to be in the description just open it up and then you want to click data folder and then just click bike sharing dot zip whatever it'll download it so once you downloaded it we want to put it in our pycharm project so i'm sure there's a way to like probably do it through this but it's oh, this is how i do it so i just go straight to my pycharm project i'll navigate to it for you guys Um, then it should be PyCharm project. So it's users and then your user and then PyCharm project and then whatever your thing's called. Whatever your thing, uh, virtual environment's called. I think we called it machine learning in this one. Um, and then I've already got it here, but I'll delete it. And then you yeah, want to open up the zip and I'm going to use day. The difference between these two is this is the daily data and this is the hourly data. I want the daily data because it's uh, smaller, so it's easier to iterate through it. So we're just going to copy the day.csv and that's it. Also, I am a bit sick at the moment, so sorry if I sound <coughs> a bit weird, but it's whatever. So let's take a look at the data. You've got the instant, which is just like a count that goes starts at one and then keeps going to show what uh, record you're at when you keep going down. Um, you got the date, season, year, month, holiday, all this shit. And then you got the count, which is... Um, the amount of bikes that were used that day. There's a bunch of information here. Uh, we're gonna use a couple of these uh, columns and we're gonna try and predict the count for that uh, day. So let's start coding it. All right, we got our Python file already open. We've got all the includes there already because we tested it out before. If you didn't see the last episode, watch it it shows you how to install everything how to test out if it's working and uh, get you ready for this anyway first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the data or we're going to read in the data and we're going to use pandas to do that so we're going to go pd which was which is pandas we imported it as pd through alias we're going to go read underscore csv because we have a csv file and it's called day.csv okay <coughs> next is we're gonna um we're gonna get the columns that we want because uh, i don't want to use all the data in the file you can if you want you can test it out see what gives better prediction but i'm just going to do a couple of columns just to make it a bit simpler so the data that i'm using is the season year if it's a holiday or not uh, if it's a weekday or not if it's a working day uh, the temperature for that day, the wind speed of that day, and then the count, which is the amount of bikes that we used that day. So we're going to do pred, which is what we want to predict. And you could predict others, like anything you want, really, but I'm going to try to count because that's what the data is for. You could try predict the season or something. I don't know if there's a correlation. It probably would be, but, you know, test it out. See what you can do. But um, this one, I'm going to be predicting the count or the number of bytes that we use so next thing is we're going to set up our x and y uh, variables here to put the data in there and our x is um our attributes which is what we're using to uh predict all right so x is the data that we use 
uh, to predict the y. <clears throat> so what's in the x variable? In the x variable is the data that we want to use to predict uh, the y variable. And in this case, we want to predict the count. So the y would be the count, and the x is everything other than the count. So this is going to be an x, and we're using all this data to predict what's, what this number is going to be, right? So the way we do this is we go x, uh, we're going to use mp array or numpy array. We're just going to go data dot drop, and we're going to put in the count. So that's why you want to drop, and then we're going to pass one. All right. So what's this doing? This is just dropping this column from the data because we want all of this except that right so this is what it's returning it's not actually changing the data variable it's just returning um this really so next we want to do the y and we're going to do np.array and then data and then what we want to predict okay simple after this you want to do the test split. So you want to go x train x test y train y test equals sklearn dot model selection train test split. Anyway, what this is doing is we're going to split up the data. Uh, into training data and testing data. In machine learning, you wanna you need data to train your model. And then once it's trained, uh, you can then test it on a bit of data. And we're gonna split it, we're gonna do a 90, 20, uh, 90, 10 split. Oh my God, we're gonna do a 90, 10 split. So we're gonna have 90% training data, 10% testing data, okay? <clears throat> so we just pass X, Y, and then we're gonna do test size equals 0 0.1, okay? What does this mean? Well, this is our x data, right? Which is what we wanna uh, base our prediction on, which is all this data. And then we've got our y data, which is what we wanna predict, which is the count. And then the test size is gonna be 10%. So the test data is, we're gonna be testing it on 10% of the data. It's gonna be randomly chosen. And that means we're gonna be training it on 90% of the data. So after this, we want to create our model, <coughs> uh, which is linear model dot linear regression, because that's what we're doing. Um, and then after this, you want to do model dot fit. And we're going to do X train and then Y train. And what this is doing is this is going to um, train our model. Now that we've trained our model, we can then test the accuracy of it uh, on our test data. So we're going to go x underscore test and y underscore test. Now the reason you want to split it up into training data and testing data is because you want data that it that your model hasn't seen before to test on because if it's seen the data before it's going to give the correct answer because it, it already knows the answer, right? So you want to give it data that's never seen before and it can try and predict what the answer is going to be. And next we're going to print out what the accuracy was. And then we're going to uh, do our predictions. So we're going to go prediction equals model dot predict. And we're just going to go uh, x test because we only need the x test data to predict the y. And then we're going to do a for loop and we're just going to um, Uh, we're going to iterate the predictions and print them out. So we're going to print what the prediction was. Which is an array. We're just going to put x in there. And then we're going to say what the actual y was for that x. Okay, so we're going to be able to see our prediction and then what it actually was. So we can see how close we were. All right, so let's run it. Hopefully we did it right. Okay, the error. Uh, pretty, yeah, I can see it already, I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, so this isn't meant to be square brackets, it's meant to be the circle brackets. Alright, that should be should be good now. Alright, cool. So it worked. So if you scroll all the way to the top you can see the accuracy that we printed out here. This is in a percentage, so we were seventy three percent accurate. Um, if you run it again, it will it should change because the training data and uh, testing data will be different. Yeah, the numbers change. Um, you can probably we'll probably maybe get higher or lower, it depends. Um, but if you take a look through uh, our predictions here, you can see some that are pretty close. Like it predicted 6,800 and it was almost 6,600. That's pretty good. Um, Oh, 4,400, it was 4,600, that's actually really good. So you can see how this works, like 1,100, 1,400, <coughs> it's pretty good. And this is just something, look how small this is, right? Look how like quick and easy this model was. It's a, machine learning's crazy. Like if you use a more complicated um, algorithm, you can do a lot with it. And it's, you know, in data science, it's, it's awesome. You know, for businesses, this is something they should really invest in. Because if you're running this bike sharing business, you could see, you know, when would you need more bikes out? When would you need less bikes out? Stuff like that. So anyway, um, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you have fun with this. If you want, you can uh, change around the data. Maybe take out some of these columns. Maybe even add some more in from the um, from the data file. I didn't use a couple of these columns. You can use more like this stuff. Average temperature. Um, casual registered you know but um i hope you had fun with that um if i'm not lazy i'll probably do uh keep going with this series and i'll do um my algorithms i'll do like support vector machines or like stuff like that maybe even um probably do k nearest neighbor next or something but anyway that was the video hope you enjoyed uh leave a like if it helped you um thanks for watching everyone